This is really the fighter and the kid. Come on, baby. Come yeah, on. I've had fans come up to me go, um, I saw you when I was in prison. Yeah, bro. Or I voted for you on last comment standing when I was in prison. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, they all, I guess they had illegal phones. Oh, they do. They all do. Yeah, there's prisoners with like TikToks and shit. Oh, dude, I, my my. So yes, I, those are cool. Yeah, they're cool. Talking to this guy who's, a, who's been a prison guard forever. Oh, we could start. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. In, talk, introduce our guest, though. Felipe Esparza in the house. What's up, fool? Thanks for having me, bro. Thank you for coming, it's brother. A little earlier you. than expected, yes. so we appreciate you adjusting, big dog. And Felipe, yes. I never like every time like I say see you or something. We're doing a show over the years. You're just like uh, you always seem like you're in a rush, or you're like you're like, hey, what's up? So we never really kind of talked or... No, I, I usually leave after the show. Yeah. I don't hang out no you more. You don't hang out. I used to hang out a lot, but then I would like get all drugged out and... <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. If Sounds you like you grew up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you stick around in that in the lifestyle, I, th I don't think people realize with stand-up because you spend all day alone, then, then at night you're out, you know, you get all this attention, then you got fans... And you're like, you don't want to sleep. And it's two in the morning. Nothing the line happens. of cocaine. What are you going to do? Yeah. It's not going to sniff itself. <laughs> you're on the road and people ask, who did you meet? Well, I met this guy who drove me to the show. I met yeah. the sound guy. Yeah. 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 And this lady who, um, the housekeeper lady who gave me towels. We spoke. Yeah. That's it. Can That's I mention my date just in case people say, oh, man, fuck this guy. <laughs> I'm going to fast forward. Yeah. I'm, I'm in Albany and New York this month. First time ever, never been there. Albany, New York. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be in St. Louis at the Helium Comedy Club. Nice. Eight shows in um, Irvine. We added a Thursday second Damn. show. Damn, you're already Damn. sold out. Crushing On the it, seventh. Huh? Oh, yeah, West Coast, no problem, man. Middle of America, they have to Google me. <laughs> and um, Florida, they got to see me at a podcast to go to my show. What about Texas? I bet you do Texas, Texas yeah. crush. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's weird, too. It's regional, isn't it? Yeah. It gets harder and harder to sell tickets because in some places, if they don't, I don't know if they're just not on your. If your, you're on their zeitgeist, yeah. Or your, yeah, it just depends. It's people play different, you know. It's it's a it's 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 always a grind selling tickets and say. Speaking of which, Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> I'll see you this uh, Friday, Saturday. Come get some. So come get some. Yeah, Biscuits. Louisville Comedy Club. But um, <clears throat> yeah, man, I don't know. So so you now you don't hang around. You just kind of keep you so you walk a straight and narrow line. And I'm married too, so. Oh, shit. That My wife comes with me to the show, so after Damn. the show, she wants to leave or hang out or go eat somewhere and hang out. How'd you, how, how'd you meet your wife? Like everyone else, bro, at the Laugh Factory. Really? She was a waitress. Oh, I got her when she was um, brand new. She was shadowing another waitress, and I came in. She thought I was Paul Rodriguez's son, <laughs> P-Rod. <laughs> P Rod, the skateboarder. These are his shoes, actually. That's funny you are say they? that. Yeah, these I noticed shoes. them when I came in, but I didn't want yeah. to say nothing because I saw that the front of them looked like a like a poncho, a sarape. Yeah, yeah. These are P Rod shoes. Or the K Flat. Twelve hundred dollars, probably, right? Uh, right I don't know. They they gave them to me. Yeah, they're all real nice shoes. Yeah, you always have you always have nice tennis shoes, by the I way. I tried, but dude, you brought the fire. Yours, today. you know, like you work at um, <laughs> Cheesecake Factory, bro. <laughs> <laughs> cheesecake. <laughs> bro, these you are golden. Like, <laughs> these are golden goose, man. They're, they're like, like you're here. Cheesecake factory. distressed, <laughs> handmade. Come on, somebody bought you're these like, for me. You drop syrup on them. I got these on my fiftieth birthday, and somebody said I'm going to buy you some designer sneakers, and they're handmade in there, but they do look like baseballs. It looks like I'm wearing somebody stretched a baseball out and wrapped yeah. it around my. Like foot. somebody broke into the Hall of Fame and took Babe Ruth. <laughs> Babe Ruth's it's old true. Cleats. <laughs> it took Babe Ruth's cleats and took the cleats off. <laughs> about, that's about how they feel. You got new. Uh, you got new kicks. Yes, man. So our fan made these for me um, a year ago. Kicks Jodamus. Shout out to him. Those are sick. That's and I've never worn them. They're Jordans. I never had Jordans. And um, custom designed, Felipe Jordan one. I saw right something there, man. With Felipe Felipe Esparza tattoo. Yes, that's good. I was like, oh shit, a really? woman. Yeah, man. She wrote this fool. Yeah. Damn, on yeah. her neck. Yeah, right here, man. Oh wow. Did you meet her? She was just her ethnicity. She had a skin tag too to match the mole. Oh my god. <laughs> on her, on her. <laughs> <laughs> I've had people like. Like I, when when I didn't uh, when I won last comic standing, I found out that like when you do a new headline, they expect you to do everything, you know. And yeah. Like there was no press, so I would just go into like a barber shop, and I would give them my DVD, and I said, "Man, just play it all week here. You have a TV, because most barber shops they have a big TV, so I would give them my DVD, 
and they would play it all week. That's smart. And that would give them a T-shirt and the owner because four tickets. Because you wanted people who were coming in yeah. to see that. Because thinking about people, are, and then they're sitting that's, just watching for at least an hour, oh, probably that's 45. Interesting. That's brilliant. So we gave them four yeah. tickets to the owner, yeah. for the employees. And then along the way, like people, oh, man, we're all going together. Then Bro. they'll bring like a 40 group people Damn. to the show. That's, that's brilliant. That's guerrilla marketing. And you do that with every barber shop? In the beginning, yeah, I would do that when I was, because I, I don't have when a million coming fans. Out, you're doing it. Yep. So I got to go there and hustle and do it. Hey, man, can you put this poster outside your shop? I'll give you four tickets and I'll do it. How'd you grow up? I grew up in uh, in the Boyle Heights. Yeah. It was like the housing projects, Aliso Pico, Pico Aliso, Pico Gardens, and Aliso Village. It's like 10 gangs. Damn. First Street Cribs. 4th Street, Piru, Elizabeth, Brim, Pimenta Flats, Capone, TMC, East LA Dukes, East LA Tiny Dukes, Cuatro Flats. Like yeah, there's a lot of gang, gang, bro. gangs in New How York. How did you Christ. navigate that? Just by being funny? Yeah. I, when I, I, I went to, um, I lived in one, I went to elementary in one school, Aliso Village. And then I went to the other, 2nd Street, which was in um, the other, the rival neighborhood. And then Hollenbeck Junior High was where everybody met. Damn. What do you mean? So so that's where all the neighborhoods would meet? Yeah. I grew up in the same neighborhood where that guy from Homeboy Industry, Greg, Father Greg Boyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the priest in my neighborhood. Oh, wow. damn. And, and then and at what age did you start stand-up? I started when I, I, right after rehab, I was like 25, 26. Really? You got done with rehab, you're like, it's time to do stand-up. Yeah. What What was that? So what were you, you went to rehab for what? I was, um... I was hanging out late, you know, I was 20 years old, 21 years old, early, late 90s, or early 90s, I forget exactly. And um, I was not in no gang, but I was a hang around. Yeah. I would hang around with a gang that had like the the younger gang. Yeah. Not the older gang, the younger gang. And it was just because that was something to do, right? That was something to do. Yeah. And they'd let you just chill? They wouldn't be like, hey, you sure you don't want to get jumped in and be an official you know, member? That happened later on. And then they, they, they jumped me in. And I was like, it was weird because I was like, I was old, 20. Yeah. And everybody was like 14, 15, old. 17. That's the way to do it, though. <laughs> Have a bunch of young kids beating you up instead of grown men. 20. I always like, talk about it. They, they, beat me, they beat me hard, man. Candy was coming out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bunch of 14 Like a pinata, bro. Like candy was coming out of my body. That's how bad the beating was. <laughs> so they, they jumped you in, then you're an official member. Official member. They started calling me Batman. Why? Because <clears throat> I had um, I only had one Batman shirt, and it was like the underoos. Yeah. So I had the Batman one and the underwear. <laughs> so I just wore the Batman. At twenty, you're wearing Batman underwear, and yeah. you're jumped in by a bunch of fourteen year olds. Yes. <laughs> that's yeah. That's not. That's where you go. We got to get our shit together over here. Did you? Did you? Uh, so you went to rehab for how long? For about a year. Damn. For um, crack cocaine. Long time. You say you say crack? Yes. Damn. Yeah, man. And, and, then, and then you came out. What was the what was the epiphany of saying I got it? I can do stand up. Yeah, where's the rock? Had bottom? you always well, been making people laugh? My question would be, where's the rock bottom with crack? Yeah, that you enter rehab. I was um on. I got into a fight with. It was stupid. I got into a fight with another guy who they were they were already they were already calling him Batman. <laughs> He was taking his, his, name, was, oh, I think his name was Steven or Steve. There can only be one Batman on the block. <laughs> he was an older man. He was 30. <laughs> he was like 30. And I was like 20. And he came out of prison for doing like eight years. Fuck. And he was he, he went in when he was 22. And then everybody would call him Batman. And he goes, not you, man. The, the other Batman. He goes, the younger Batman. He goes, I'm the real Batman. So one day he got out. He got drunk and I'm PCP. Oh, and he approached me, started strangling me. Like and really that PCP like, strength is no punk. No, it's like bro, bane. No, you yeah, shoot super somebody strong. in the face ten times. Yeah, yeah. PCP strength is no. Yeah, like Ronnie King. You know, he was on PCP. Oh, he was. Yeah, yeah. That's why I took the beating. Damn. Yeah. So, so, so you got in a fight, or maybe he just choked you. You got into a fight, and I couldn't get out of his um, choke hold. <laughs> you know, I have no. I don't know. Mixed he's just like arts. he's just like this, like yes. a rape choke. They call it rape like, choke. And, and a headlock, oh, okay. kind of oh, old school, like a bully headlock, yeah. and so bulldog. And he was like hitting me. I didn't know what to do. I don't know mixed, mixed martial arts, so I just bit his ear off. You know, I started I went for his ears, and I bit like a little piece of his ear off. I mean, people will scream, bro. Oh yeah, that's a good. When technique. a piece of their skin, hell comes yeah. Off. 
Whether you're Batman or not, that shit hurts. Then I, I, um, I took out my belt, man. I started beating him like a runaway slave, bro. <laughs> like beating him, bro. Like, where's your ID? You know, just beating him. <laughs> Who sent you? You know. <laughs> and um, <laughs> the next day, he he, he went to um, the hospital, and he didn't want to press charges. He said, "No, I'm gonna handle it the, the, the let the streets handle it." Oh shit! So then I, I was scared, and that's when. Father Greg Boyle, he, my mom talked to him, and he, he took me to rehab mm. right after, like a week later. So, so the, I fight, chicken, the fight with Batman did it. Yeah, man. And then you said, I'm going to start doing stand-up, or you, were you making people laugh in rehab, or what? In rehab, I was like the, the old, like young in there. There was a lot of old people, like 55, 60. Mm. They were all heroin addicts, and they were all, I was like, I guess crack was new. Yeah. And but, but it was non-denomination. There was a lot of Armenians there for yeah. alcoholism, and and we would go to different churches, like Muslim church for those people, and us Christian and Catholic. But we all would meet up in one church in Burbank, called the Burbank Community Church with Pastor Jones. Damn. And that guy, bro, was man, what you call like hardcore Christian, bro. Like he was, he got mad that they built Universal Studios. Oh, because wow. that took away some of the congregation. Oh, wow. Because people would rather watch movies than watch the, the Jesus Lord. Christ, the yeah. Lord. So we would go there. But one of the guys that helped us was a, a guy named Tim. He was a Catholic, um, like a Nacho Libre style guy. Uh, he was a Jesuit brother. Yep. Not a priest. Yep. So he goes. Jesuits. Monk, he, a form of a monk. Yeah. He goes, he does like the priest dirty work. Yeah. Like if hardcore you have, dudes. Like really? if, hardcore you, dudes. Like if you have hardcore money, most likely the priest will show up to your house. Mm. If you have no money, a Jesuit um, brother will show up. Yeah. yeah. And he'll speak on behalf of the church. So he will come to the rehab and speak to us. How do you feel today? So you gotta write down how do you feel today? And man, and you would never have to like he won't read it, but you will express your feelings in a paper. So one day he said, um, Write down five things you want to accomplish in life. Your five goals, your dreams. So we didn't know what, what the hell was talking about. So I wrote, I always wanted, wanted to be the real Batman. <laughs> you know, <laughs> always wanted to be Spider-Man. Then people were writing stuff like that. Grown men, they don't know. They never wrote goals. So I wrote, I want to be a comedian. Wow. And I want to be, I want to be happy. And I want to go to Italy because I like Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> Then I forgot four and five. <laughs> so now we had a, so he said, don't read it to me. Now you have a purpose in life. You know, for the first time you have goals. If you accomplish one of those things, you know, it'll, it'll be, that's close to perfection. Damn. So I've never been Isn't to it Italy. funny how somebody can say one thing? One thing. you never been to Italy, you're not Batman. You you're can not go to Italy. Are you going to go? <laughs> I went to, but I did um, end up being a comedian. So when I came out of rehab, I said, all right, I'm going to try to be a comedian now because I already lied to people that I was a comedian back in the days. Yeah. I went to the library because there was no social media, no internet. And I talked to this old lady that works there, a librarian. I said, can you tell me, I want to be, I told her, I want to be a comedian, fool. I want to, can you show me where, where to get these books to learn how to be a comedian? And she took me to like the, the glossary, I guess, mm -hmm. the English section. And it was all like, um, Macbeth and fucking <laughs> Shakespeare. Yeah, that's too much. <laughs> then there was a Fuck book. That. There was um um comedy writings with um the, um some guy that used to be on a Tonight Show, mm -hmm. and he was in a movie ca casino. I don't know his name. Right. I don't know his name. But none of that shit was helpful. No. no. Hell no. But I found this no. one little book called Comedy Writing Step by Step by Gene Perret. Damn. And that guy used to write for the Tonight Show. I know that and he used book. To go I on, know that book. He used to go on tour with comics. I've seen that book before. So he'll be like, like if Johnny Carson wanted to do his jokes on ski trips, he would write 100 jokes on ski trips. Oh, it's wow. so funny because you said, oh, I saw that book a long time ago. And I remember thinking, I'm not going to read that book because it just seemed like, I, I don't know, I just couldn't like figure hacky it. Almost. it yeah, yeah. Just, yes. like, I don't want to yeah. be that. Yeah, it's so, so interesting. So anyway, but you, so you, you got it, you read it. And that, that was helpful, though. Yeah, I, I got the book, and um, but it was like, man, it was so it was kind of outdated because it was like 
So basically, he he taught you how to write jokes. Yeah. A lot of jokes. Like that George Burns. Yes. Like B Bob Hope's shit, right? Yes. Like, and yeah. the guys who used to be on Tonight Show before him, I can't think of his name. Alan Jackson? No, that's a country singer. No, no. Um, Alan, um, man, I know exactly who you're yes. talking I met him. All right, kiddos, let's take a little break because this episode of The Fighter and the Kid is brought to you by True Classic. They are our favorite freaking sponsor. They have the best shirts, the best clothes ever. Now, when you think of True Classic, if you've ordered any Fire and the Kid merch, Thick Boy merch, it's usually always on True Classic tees, but they just don't make the best t-shirts ever. No, no, so much more. The joggers I'm wearing, the crew necks you see me wear. Brian wears it every single day. It's the Brian Callen starter kit. They have joggers. They have jeans. They have button-ups. Their, their nice uh, dress-up button-ups are great. They fit great. All their shirts, everything they make, are made to highlight the places people's eyes go first. Tighter in the arms, tighter in the chest, perfect amount of the room in your midsection. The best part is True Classic sells their premium products in packs to help you save. Get started with a two or three pack of t-shirts today. Feel the difference yourself. Also, just in time for spring, True Classic introduced over 10 new colors in their classic crew neck, V-neck, the polos are great. Shop instant new favorites like their Heather Sapphire Steel, their uh, Dark Orchid, uh, and so much more. They have all the dope colors, whatever you're looking for. I'm rocking the white shirt now. If you see me in a white tee, it's true freaking classic. They are my absolute favorite freaking tees. For a limited time only, you get 25% off when you shop with the link at trueclassic.com slash fighter. Again, that's 25% off when you go to trueclassic.com slash fighter fighter whatever you need they got you covered so if you're ready to upgrade your closet get rid of that old crusty stuff get some of the dopest tees in the game the button-ups the jeans the joggers the crew necks the hoodies it doesn't stop they just got the best gear on the planet so many colors to choose from all you gotta do is go to trueclassic.com slash fighter and you save up to 25 percent off your first order all right no matter how you move make 2024, your most comfortable year yet with True Classic. That's trueclassic.com slash fighter. Hey, fellas, remember last time we had the gas station, you saw those horribly branded erection pills or the, the shots like Rhino 7000. Those are scary. They're tempting. I get it. They're tempting. But you ever take a second to see what's actually in those products? You're going to grow a third eye. The erection is the least of your worries with that stuff. And they're awful for you. Same goes for most of the products on the market. They claim to help dudes in the bed, but who wants a four-hour erection? Nobody. You get nasty side effects, heart problems, been there, and a possible trip to the hospital just to get rid of that large wiener you're working with because the blood is pumping. We don't want that. <clears throat> you do not want that. That's why Joy Mode is here to save the day. Whether you're happy or unhappy with your performance in the bedroom, why not perform even better? Put a little supercharger on your dick game. Joy Mode Sexual Performance Booster is like a pre-workout, but for sex. Wouldn't you rather take a supplement designed to spice things up naturally rather than a prescription drug that can have crazy side effects down the road? You do. You go to great lengths to biohack your way to a better mental and physical performance, but what about the sack, dude? What about your girl, man? Or dude, for that matter? Joy Mode makes natural and science-backed sexual wellness products for the bros. They're sexual performance boosters like the pre-workout, but for sex. The sexual performance booster is designed to support erection quality and firmness and sex drive. Contains all the stuff you want, arginine, nitrate, uh, ginseng, vitamin C. It was all created with the best-in-class scientists and biochemists. Uh, PhDs. Wow, they're really doing their thing. Sexual performance booster is even more powerful when used daily. Beyond its usage before sex, it supports blood vessel, tissue health, cardiovascular health, heart health, athletic performance in and outside the gym, healthy blood pressure, and just general boner function. All right, we got you guys, man. All right, simply tear open the sachet, make a six to eight ounces of water, just mix it in there. Just like your favorite, uh, whatever drink you're making, just mix the powder in there. Consume it anywhere from 45 to 4 hours prior to you and your girl or dude getting busy. You'll notice better blood flow, better erection, quality firmness. Okay, the quality and the firmness does not go unnoticed by the ladies. 
right? Increase sexual energy and drive. Want to spice things up in the bedroom and boost your sexual performance? Cool. You can do it naturally without nasty prescription drugs with crazy side effects. And we have a special offer for your wiener. We got you, man. Go to usejoymode.com, promo code FIGHTER. That's usejoymode.com slash FIGHTER. Enter the code FIGHTER for 20% off your first order. That's usejoymode.com slash FIGHTER. Usejoymode.com slash FIGHTER for 20% off your first order. Thanks, Joy Mode. So he will, he will be like... um um. So you're going to write a jokes about uh, mixed martial arts. So you would have to write mixed Steve martial arts. Steve, Steve Allen. Allen. Steve yes. Allen. He's true with, he would write, you would write mixed martial arts. So then in the bottom right here, you write all the uh, one co five columns. On one column, you'll write all the mixed martial moves you can think of without looking them up. Mm. Prr. And then right here, you write all the mixed martial um, people you know, like Brendan Schaub. A bunch of Brian names. Callen. Then right here, you write <laughs> stuff that they have said, like, like their common line, like Brennan Shaw would have said. Uh, he had a common line that he would always say. You would write down right there, and That's then interesting. everybody's line. And then you, then on the long way, you write facts that you remembered. I feel like this one, is how Chat GPT writes. Stuff. Yeah. So then you would, after that, you write a, 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 a you write a joke about Brennan Shaw. Yeah. You know, and then uh, other, then you write jokes. Yeah. But you're basically you're brainstorming. Yeah, yeah, that's all you're doing is brain. I've I, I've been that's in a writing session with comics before, and some comic was like classically trained like that. And they're like, all right, what, what, what's funny? And you say, my dad. All right, well, what's interesting about your dad? And it's, you write five things. All right, and then what's uh, five things that people don't know about him? And then by the time you get to the end, you have like this kind of like uh, at least kind of a blueprint mm. to uh, of, a, of a joke you don't have a joke but you at least have a path mm -hmm. it starts the kernel it really helps yeah i know that stuff sounds old school but it really helps no it helps yeah. anything like that anytime you have scaffolding or a framework <laughs> you know that you can write. especially when you're with other comics they're like oh dude you know what'd be funny right. and then it just starts there and then it just sidetracks or sometimes you can get a theme like i like my i think my what i'm writing about like my new special is going to be basically I, i've always walked around thinking i was like Tough. like the best person no oh. like a good person which i am i'm a good person yeah. right oh, yeah you are and, and and but like you know you always think man i wish the world was n nice like me and and everybody would get along that kind of bullshit and i realize that that's not true like i'm i'm a good person and stuff like that but if you look at your motivation behind what you're doing a lot of it's just you just want to live forever you know or whatever it might be but it's it, like you can come up with a theme and start kind of exploring how the fuck you really think and that that can find you can find a lot of good stuff in that have yeah. you have you seen that dude he was on schultz recently but he's he's pretty big on social media i think he's like 45 or maybe he's 50 but his body is like that of a, like a 25 year old oh yeah he's, uh, brian johnson he's obsessed with staying young yeah brian johnson like, he's a, he lives in venice that can't be a way to live man uh, that must be exhausting it, he measures the erection three times a, a night he he takes 110 pills a day. Oh wow! That can't be a yeah. way to live. Like no, you, you're not enjoying. He's, he's a like, very yeah, you weird might live guy. 20 years longer than me, but but no. at least I'm living. He's so weird. He's a very weird oh, guy. That hey, guy. Bubba, he doesn't have kids. Uh, uh, <laughs> or if uh, he does, I don't. know. No, he he has a son that looks identical to him. I think. Wow. And, he's, and he wants weird. to always like drink his blood. Yeah. I made that yeah. part up, but it is weird. Wow. He's got a lot of money. Have, have you seen this guy? Felipe? No, I thought you were talking about this comedian I saw at the mothership that looks 14. But he's actually 22. Who who is that? No, did they? Oh, oh, they didn't get me. Oh, really? I saw him with um Tim D Dillon. He looked like. I wonder who that is. Is it Tim's guy? Yeah, I think so. He he, he was at the mothership when I was there. He looks 12, but he's actually 22. Because I remember I was smoking, and then when he came into the green room, <laughs> I went. I, I tried to hide it, but then he started smoking. I said, okay. Young That's kid. a twelve-year-old. Yeah. I thought he graduated from um, comedy camp at the Laugh Factory, but oh wow, I wonder he's who like that is. Benjamin Buttons, but really? backwards. That's hilarious. I thought you were talking about him. Does he have a beard? No, he's huh. just baby face. Yeah, th those 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 guys that are always trying to fight, you know, Father Time. It just can't be a way to live. No. And nobody I, ever wins. Nobody All wins. All the time's undefeated. You're not going to win. Nobody ever wins. No. Everyone loses 10 8 rounds. But the idea is like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no. But, but, but what they're doing, that's so funny. You know, Nobody's going to win. This is this, Never. He's this undefeated. This is this longevity dude. project. So what they're doing is that all of them are trying to preserve what they have the best they can so that in 20 years, when they have Catches these advances up. of how to stop the cell from breaking down, 
they can then like, like you'll have a your body will be so it's like the, so this idea now right now is if you can stay alive for 20 more years right just 20 years this is what they're so thinking so technology catches up well yeah th it's called uh it's called it's some kind of a velocity it's called like uh, not terminal velocity but, but is it, isn't this what Walt Disney did that's why he froze his yes, body yes 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 he he cryogenically froze himself but now the idea is if you can stay alive for 20 years it may be that every year after that they double your life or they can they can they can get uh, give you another year so you hit this this sort of thing where you can kind of technically live to for 200 years escape velocity that's it it's a theory that posits we may soon reach a point where aging is optional that can't be good well i just don't i just don't think it's the way to go i, I don't know you know what I'm saying? I, I bet God's up there like, God, damn, I gave you guys Hundo. Yeah, we also Hundo's don't have any anti-aging drugs yet. It's like, I've been waiting for them to clone hair for how fucking long? <laughs> Literally. Seriously. Like, turkey. how long is it going to take you motherfuckers? Every single per turkey. It's done, dude. I know, but he I don't want to. I want to grow go. my own hair. I want good hair. I want, I want them to go. I want to go, hey, I want Felipe Esparza hair or Brandon Schaub hair. You guys have fucking good hair. You're never losing your hair. Yeah, it's just the way the, the roll of the dice does. Well, I fucking and i want muscles <laughs> okay man go to turkey so, and so then I'll, this, I'll take you down to tijuana for the steroids well yeah with, the, with this whole new fucking uh and longevity thing the two things that the, that are going to make the first things that we're going to see are probably going to be you're going to be able to put on muscle and you're going to be able to grow hair and that those are the where all the money is and it's then, always weird like i got a buddy that wakes up and before he goes to bed puts one of those red light thing mask on yeah he's like dude you got to try and it's all this money no and I see him like, you look exactly the same. Right. It's not. Right. Just give it up, bro. Sleep and not eating as much <laughs> and working out and then less stress. I don't know. My 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 friend's um, mom or no grandmother, Toby Hicks, she's 102. Mm -hmm. Some people can, you know, I mean, a lot of it's they, they say. Like, but have you, know, you ever seen a 102 year old? You're like, damn, I, damn I, hopefully I live that long. No, I see him like, Jesus. Christ. Yeah, it's not she looked like she would have fall off this, she'd probably die. Game over. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You know, no, she's like, very frail. Bro. Yes. Of course. That's You're what like, you never see a 102 year old crushing it. You're no. like, oh, man, I, man, I'd love to get there. Never. They she's never reach for it. stuff. They would have like a stick. Yeah. <laughs> you want to you be the stick guy at a hundo? She breaks down. It just breaks down. Especially if does. you're bigger. Like, I'm screwed. Like, you know, there's no big grandpas out there. Yeah, you pretty, you, you, but you've stayed in shape your whole life. Like, you've never stopped moving. Yeah. I, I mean, Father Time sent me. My dad is. Father Time sent me with a wet dick in 2024. He's just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I feel like you're, I don't know. I feel like you're, hey, you're, you're viral as a motherfucker. Dude, you, you've changed a little bit. Things are different. How many, how many views does his truck have you seen this we'll thing? Yeah, we'll take a look at his page, but uh, he made TMZ as well, so we, we might as well just play it. <laughs> Did you hurt yourself? Uh, I got a really bad concussion. It happened in uh, like it happened January six, um, so it happened a while ago. But I couldn't post anything till we got the okay from insurance, so I was able to post it when we end of February. So you, you know, about Flip two, months, a two months later. Off -road. So this is on TMZ. Look at how. Look at what a. What a redneck you look like. Look at that. Awesome I don't like mustache. That knocked me out, Fleet Bit. That, that gave me a slight. It may hit you right in the head, dude. Oh, yeah. I like the people, like, you weren't wearing a seatbelt. I was. I took it off midair. Like the Matrix. Because I was worried the truck was going to fall on top of me. So midair, I unclipped the seatbelt so I'd drop and could get out. But then the side hey, airbags. Thought, you were calm. Me. Oh, yeah. You stayed calm. Oh, yeah. I do well in high pressure situations. You do. I can't believe yeah. that it didn't knock you out the airbag. It, 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 it was, it a, it was like a flash it, knockout. Yeah, first. Flash I went knockout. boom. You and then I didn't realize it when I got out. Casey was like, "Are you?" He's like, "Oh my god, are you okay?" I'm like, "I'm good." And Casey was like, Whoa. "As your friend, man, thank God." As a producer, <laughs> this is fantastic. Yeah, man. You're up to right. the dunes with Napoleon Dynamite's grandma. <laughs> That's right. <dude. laughs> what the heck are you doing in the dunes? <laughs> what are you doing in the dunes? <laughs> Oh, that's that's amazing. But it's funny because but after going through insurance and dealing with all that, like we, I just got my new truck. Yeah. Like some, you know. Oh, not a rental. No, I wish. If that was a rental, my life would be so much easier. <sighs> Derek posted. Oh, damn. Derek posted, but you. he put the N word and said, "How you casually flip your truck?" <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to posted. Yeah, and platinum Mike Bear is like got out of there so fast. Hell yeah, I did. I was worried it was going to cave on 
came on top of me. It's at 1.4 mil right now in views. It's on 1.4 on IG. Mm-hmm. It's at 2.5 on Twitter. It's at 1.6 on TikTok. And then the other page is the big one. Like there's one, it's at 18 million. Mm. Uh, yeah. I think total case scheme track where. It, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do, you, do I feel like you're a little cocky now that you're so famous? Remind me of um, when um, <laughs> the big Lebowski, when um, Jeffrey Lebowski had just got his car off the out of the lot and he's smoking a joint, you're gonna be a chase got back from me, the noise. <laughs> and then the joint burns his crotch and he crashes <laughs> yeah. into a, the wall. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you ever been in any crashes? Yeah. You have? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember this this guy. He loaned he he loaned his car he loaned his car for sixty bucks because he wanted to buy drugs. So I just I gave him he gave me I gave him sixty dollars and he loaned his car or like a seventy one Impala. And I, my friend and I we bought a bunch of food and we thought we were gonna go to Santa Monica Pier like two in the morning and just have a good time. But I, um I I put the accelerator too far too far in and it was a cur a, a curve. And I never drove a fast car. Yeah. And I hit every pole <laughs> on the way into the freeway. And then the last pole stabbed us, <laughs> stabbed the radiator. And we're not wearing, I'm the only one wearing a seatbelt. Everybody flies through the front. <laughs> and uh, we had a bunch of nachos, jalapenos. <laughs> and everybody is, it's they're all over eyes. everybody's <laughs> eyes. So they're blind on the way out. They can't see. <laughs> The next day, the guy goes, what happened to my car? He goes, I don't know, man, but here's the keys. We just left it there. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Shit is wild, dude. Here's the he keys. He goes, man, how can you, how can you loan, how can you, I blame it on the guy, how can you give us your car like that? You know we couldn't drive. <laughs> yeah, the by the way, him. he had no offense, but like Philly, a young Felipe Esparza, yeah. just high looking for drugs or whatever. Also, like, what do you think was going to happen, dude? You'd lend these kids drive your car for 60 bucks so you can get drugs? Yeah, I mean, it's not going to work oh, out. Oh, my bad. I, it didn't work out. So funny. I saw that guy <clears throat> eight years later at a Narcotics Anonymous meeting. <laughs> and I thought he was going to come up to me and punch me. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, um, when you wrecked my car, he goes, that's why I knew I had to change my life. <laughs> <laughs> you helped him out, dude. And I felt bad. It was, I just when home. I gave out my '68 Impalas when I knew I was hit rock bottom. I need man. a ride home. That's a sweet ride. Are you? Uh, how many times have you been in rehab? Just one time. Oh, okay. The Did second you? time of cold turkey, I did it on my own. Nice. That yeah, that you're the exception. So you sober now? Yeah, I don't. I don't drink beer. I don't, I don't do um, any other kind of stuff. Sounds like you're California sober. You, yes, you do weed. Yes, yeah, uh, you're California sober. Yeah. Mushroom, Different mushroom. sober. Mushrooms and weed. Are yeah, more manic. I don't eat beef and milk too. <laughs> yeah, so fuck my body. That's where, Yeah, you're. Too that's bad. funny when you say that because I went to um when I went to um my house checkup, my first time ever. They drew blood. It was in Glendale, California. It was your first time you ever had a checkup? Yeah, it was in Glendale, and I was living in Glendale. And, and I guess they hire anyone to do those jobs now, to draw blood. Or maybe the doctors I go to. But the guy was like a hardcore thug, a cholo, bro. Yeah. He had a bunch of tattoos from his gang. And I was like, you're not going to stab me, are you? Just joking with him. Nah, Holmes. He goes, did you go to school for this? And I said, I was interviewing him for the job <laughs> that he already has. Yeah. You go to school for this, Holmes? <laughs> he goes, nah, homie, back in the days, he didn't go to, go to school for this. He <laughs> <laughs> the test, eh? <laughs> Nah, so he's, man. He's, he's all, all, vain. He's he's all vain. jovial and speaking the slang, making me laugh. And then he goes, he's like looking for my vein. Ah, you got a good one right here, right? <laughs> and then um, I um, I was talking to a doctor because I'm. He said that none of the drugs, like cocaine and PCP, heroin and LSD, everything I've ever done, mm. ruined my body. But he said, right now, dairy is fucking on my body. Because your cholesterol was really high? Yeah. So dairy is fucking That's on my body. That's how you know you're getting older. Yeah. Dairy? So cocaine is all right. He goes, yeah, just don't cut it with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm at parties, bro. I'm like, hey, man, I know there's going to be a lot of drugs there, man. There's going to be um, non dairy products. Is that a sharp products. cheddar? <laughs> yes. Keep there's going to be no cheese wheel there, are there? <laughs> no cow products. <laughs> I'm down to go, man, but if there's sharp cheddar, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. you, I'm like, uh, man, you OD? No, Boro. Somebody put milk in my drink. <laughs> <laughs> and we ordered a black coffee. Yeah. So you're doing your job. 
Do, do, does your wife stay on top of your health? Is she, is she pretty strict with it or no? No, actually, I was. She grew, she um she grew up um first day at Venice, I guess. Is, is she lat Latina? No, she's white. She was in Venice. No, she grew up um, first day at Venice. At oh, Venice, yeah. The, 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 the church. First day at Venice. So they're all veg they're all vegetarian. Yeah. So she grew up vegan with her mom. I think those are the people that live forever out in Louis, uh, San Luis Obispo or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're built like Loma Kermit Linda, the Frog. Loma Linda. What do you call it? First day at Venice. Loma Linda, first first day or day. Uh, One of the blue zones. They've is, never is, won an arm is, wrestling is, is contest. Third no. day at Venice or something. First day at Venice. Either it at Bent. First day at Bent. Christian. Wow. Yeah, they're all vegetarian. Mm. So is wow. she, and she to this day vegetarian? Yeah. And does she make you eat vegetarian? Yeah. How's I don't. I, I like it now, but I, I I started being vegan when I was in 2012. I was um, trying to do the Atkins diet. Yeah. Mm. You know, which is the keto diet now. Yeah. I was just eating only beef patties and cheese, cheese and sour cream and diet cokes. Yeah. No water. No yeah. lettuce. Yeah. I was constipated Sounds for like, like my diet. Through five days. Yeah. I had to take a Lamas class to learn how to take a shit again. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, yeah. when I, you should drink water. That you can so drink when water, I took a shit, way. man, I like I didn't. All my life, I've been pushing shits out. You know, I never like sat there and let it come out naturally. Yeah. ever in my life. So I, I'm trying to push this fucking Atkins shit out, bro. Yeah, it looks like it's explosive explode, out of you. Explode, bro. Like yeah. blood came out. I was scared. Okay. Yeah. yeah, like I was like, like I, I, I must have had like four hemorrhoids. For yeah. the first time, Ew. just from pushing, and of course, being a man, I didn't tell no one, you know. No, yeah. hell no. I just kept it cool. Yeah. Can... Every once in a while, during a conversation, yeah, man, um, yeah, the Dodgers won. Yeah, anybody butt hurt? <laughs> <laughs> your butt it just. How about those Rams? Yeah, that's crazy. Man. Yeah, yeah, your butt yeah, itch yeah, all the time? Have you ever had hemorrhoids? No. It well, feels. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, bro. Hold on. No, hold on. Uh, hold on. Kennedy Boy. squeezed me no, after no, my it, show. No, no. I have it. It feels. No, you, Bro, when yeah. there's itches, like when you, you know, when your foot itches, you're like, ah, oh, that's annoying. When you have a hemorrhoid, it is the most intense itch that you cannot solve. Really? It is, if you want to torture ISIS, give them hemorrhoids. <laughs> Please. Really? Dude, it was the most insane itch I've ever had in my ass. Damn. It, and I'm not telling like ass you get it just from uh, squatting or something? Uh, for heavy lifting. I was doing yeah. heavy deadlift in college. Dude, my ass hole, it had a grape sized hemorrhoid on my asshole. Yeah. Oh, wow. It itched. And you, I'm driving itching my and it went back ass. You're driving like this. Oh, bro. And it went back to normal after <laughs> a little while. No. I mean, what's normal? And then, yeah. and then if, you, if you scratch it, it starts, when you go it use, the, use the restroom, it hurts like a motherfucker. It feels, when you wake up, it feels like somebody sodomized you at night. Yeah, somebody's sticking it. Somebody raped you at night. Yeah. But the, but the, the itch, it's, it's torture. It never yeah. goes away. It's the most intense itch you've ever had in your life. Jesus. Fuck. And then your fingers smell like shit, obviously. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, because well, you're around you're, your asshole. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a disaster. <laughs> Just little thing. Ah, get you try everything, man. Like shoving a, a ice cube up your butt. Whatever, uh, whatever, whatever. To get rid of the itch, if someone's like, the only way to do this, we gotta get. Well, you gotta. Sometimes you gotta go to the doctor. They gotta. They gotta fucking. Lance I had up. a friend who told me what you they gotta do off. is put your finger all the way in and just stab it. Yeah, push it so back it hurts, in. And that's it what I work. did, and it worked. But it hurt like a off. Yeah, that's what I did. I took I took this push this, it back this, in. this big old finger and just shoved it back in, and we good, baby. We're good. It's never man. been back. So disgusting. I'm oh, it's a disaster. My, I'm back on my big wheel. Yeah, back that on my three wheel tricycle, man. baby. Big wheel. <laughs> it was but one of the worst days of my life, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I felt, man. I didn't, I didn't tell anybody. No, me neither. So then I got so scared. Fuck this. I'm going to stop eating anything that makes my, my butt hurt, like beef. So I went a whole month without beef. Yeah, bro. And then cheese. Then I just started being vegan. It was fucked. I don't want that pain and again. And now it's good. No, it still comes back. It never leaves. Yeah. Like an ex. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's like, it, that's, it's like an, an ex who's obsessed with you. They go away for a little bit, and then they rear their ugly head. <laughs> yeah, mine come back from now and just say, what's up, bud? And you're like, oh, <laughs> no. Well, and then they leave. Yeah, because I, I, <laughs> cause I, I got off stage in Austin and Tim Kennedy grabbed me and squeezed me and like just hugged me and I wasn't ready for it. And I, I remember I was like, why does my asshole feel like somebody's fingers in it? And then I felt it and I had a, I had a hemorrhoid, but it went away after about four days. Was it, now was it outside or was it in the outside, lane? Outside. Was it, I don't know. Yours was outside? Mine was out. My, mine came outside. Oh my God, that's painful. It was the size of a grape. It was purple too. Jesus. Mine was inside. Yeah, you're the wow. That's, 
I've seen when I first look when I when I started googling it. Oh, that's God. the first one that showed up was the outside hemorrhoid. Wow, you must have been really pushing those weights. Oh, dude, I was getting it. Yeah, not worth it. That, so when you were lifting common. those weights. You were pressing your your ass cheeks yeah, together. You're straining so much, then finally your asshole goes. It's just like a, a levy. Just so I, I, now that you mention it, remember when I was doing at the Venice Barbell Club and you said be careful. Yeah, because I was doing that Olympic lifting. My asshole itched, and I remember saying my asshole itched, and the guy yeah, goes, be That's careful as code. Right. Be careful as code for don't the do hemorrhoids. It. Hemorrhoid. Yeah. That's but as guys, we don't really talk about it. Yeah, you're sure. Yeah. Women get them when they're, when they're given uh, birth. Because birth, they're pushing so hard, the asshole yes, that's goes. Right. That's right. God. And you start when you when you're in pain, you start thinking about invention. How they because you 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 do something that actually works. How come they don't invent this? Right. Yeah. Like I, I was thinking about the frozen underwear. <laughs> that's a good. That's good. Frozen underwear would be very good. That'd be very good. Yeah. In some of them, if they're sure, like, thank God, mine went. I just pushed them back in. Was like, get out of here. But some never come back in. So then they gotta tie them off with oh. small rubber bands and singe them. They gotta ah. they gotta singe them off. So you're also hanging out like. Those those things that hang out on some people's ears. Yeah, huh? like a mole, like a big fat mole, but a the size of a grape. Yeah, but a size of a grape and plump. And you just kept lifting weights after that. Yeah, man, a break? pushing it back in, lifting, whatever it takes. I never understood there. The, uh, this is why I've never understood why some people, men and women, are into assholes. They're into it, like they want to lick it, or they want to. I just I, with I, jelly. Yeah, I don't need that. I'm not. I've never been into the asshole. It's our animal instinct. <laughs> like if a girl's into my butthole, I'm like, hey, hey, hey. come well, on, man. At your age, I mean, I mean it's any age. It's just like, come on. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I mean, I, for me, and, and not like I don't like when they when they do that, especially because always like a surprise. Hey, hey, what are you doing there? But like, <laughs> but every man, I, I, I remember did a bit of a bit of body goes, man, that's a lie. Uh, but I was like, because um, the woman, I, I was with a woman once, and she told me. He goes, yeah, man. Every woman, every man here, the G spot. You, you mean a butthole? No, no, no. Fuck that. It ain't a butthole. He goes between a butthole and uh, your balls, your scrotum. Yeah, the t taint. Yeah, the taint. Because I remember I had this woman. I don't know what she was. She, I was behind her or she was on top of me, and she had a knuckle and she kept stabbing me right there, bro, yeah. over and over. That's not fun. Over and no, over. But, make you but it felt good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but every time she got close to my butthole, I was like, hey. Yeah, but then it got easy, good. Easy. Yeah, yeah. But I think she wanted to go in my butthole. She would loosen, she loosen me up for next time, but there was right. never next time. <laughs> felt That's good. exactly right. She wanted to get into that. She wanted my password. Okay, here we go. As far as a butthole. <laughs> yeah, you, be is careful. Is Spanish though. your first language? Yes. That, and you did a special. Your special you did in Spanish and English. Yeah, it was tough, tough because I thought I really knew Spanish, but it's all like. West Coast Spanish. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't, Different Spanish. Doesn't exist in English, regular Spanish. Yeah, like me and my girl will be watching something with my mother in law. And it'll be in Spanish. It'll be like a Spanish actor, like Narcos. And they're like, oh, no, he, he's Brazilian. Like, that's not. Or they'll be like, no, he's, he's from Spain. That's not real Spanish. Like, the, he has an accent. I'm like, doesn't everybody have an accent? Yeah, like if somebody you watch like they'll know right away if it's like an like if, especially if an American actor that's trying Spanish. That was like they go, oh, it's terrible. Do you remember like, Squid Games when the Americans were talking and it's like that's not some. There was a couple actors where you're like, you're not speaking. English. Your wife is Mexican. Yeah, born and raised Guadalajara. Guadalajara, Guadalajara. <laughs> I'm I'm talking super Mexican. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah whole, man. Whole household is. So her, she speaks perfect Spanish. Probably, perfect you know? Spanish. My mother-in-law. Italian. Your wife speaks yep. Italian. Pela, pela. Yep. M mother-in-law. Yeah. Oh, like, I mean, English is her second language, but it's like dicey. And you've not Kids picked up. Spanish. You've not picked up. Oh, not a lick. <laughs> not, a <laughs> not a fucking. Red it's lick. hard, bro, because it, it, it comes at him at different speeds. Yeah. So it's sometimes it comes out real fast, then it comes out really slow. I, I'll, I'll know. Like I can make out what they're saying if I know the topic they're talking about. But your son speaks it. Fluently. Both kids speak it, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's my so my son too. My son. Where's nanny, he learning that from? His nanny only speaks Spanish to him, and mm. he watches Spanish TV. So Slight my flex. two year old, yeah, my two year old is uh, literally speaks fluent Spanish. Like he understands as much Spanish as English. It's crazy. Yeah. So she speaks to him only in Spanish, and I'm like, how the fuck? And then he'll sometimes speak to me in Spanish, and I'm like, I don't. And I have to look at my wife and go, what the fuck? Is I don't know what the fuck. Oh um, no, my son asked for snacks in Spanish. I'm like, bud, it's just you and me. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't happening. It's not happening. Like I have no clue what you're talking Tell about. Him, it's it's tu y yo no mas. <laughs> yeah, I just go porque, porque. No, okay. there's no, 
it's not happening but you gotta you gotta speak english around here but your spanish is like west coast spanish like yes. slang what slang you, you gotta be slang when i was doing my special i was saying um stuff like mis brecas my bricks mm. and that's not a that's not a spanish word it's yeah. a word made up caro that's like car that. is yeah. caro but yeah. um i was saying brecas and the, the correct way to say breaks in Spanish is frenos, which I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know how to say hallway because I just go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, go different. down the hallway. Which way? My <laughs> yaira. <laughs> but it's pasillo. Pasillo. Which I didn't, I didn't. I know how to read Spanish. And but I just don't know sometimes what I'm reading. Is that interesting? Like an in American who grows, you know, obviously Mexican descent, but if they learn Spanish in America, it's different. The the right. true Mexicans look. It's almost frowned upon. Yes. Like my like my uh, brother in law, he grew up in America, not like my wife, but he, he grew up here, and they'll make fun of his yeah, Spanish. Yeah, if, if you're speaking Castilian Spanish, they're like, get out of here. Yeah, I don't know what that means. But it's, it's like Spanish Spanish, you know. Yeah, but the, yeah, they'll be Spanish. like, oh, his Spanish isn't good. I'm like, it's Spanish, isn't it? But back to your son learning uh, Spanish when they're young, they you know they'll pick up whatever you're giving them. So same thing with baseball. Um, when he first started, uh, they goes, he right or left handed. I go, he's right handed, so make make sure he's only hitting from the right. And then uh, one of the coaches was like, Don't tell him he's right handed. No, don't They're tell like, him watch that. this. So they threw him a ball and uh, they're like, put it in your other hand. They don't even tell him. Don't tell him he's a boy. Yeah, don't tell him that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's different. Yeah. Let him pick the dress. No, he uh <laughs> yeah, he's a baby. If if you don't tell him, so now he can switch it. He he doesn't comprehend it. Damn that most so people smart because so smart. as a side we're like, no, he's right handed. But he doesn't. So I he's are, like, oh, baseball, so we throw left or right. We bat left or right. That's yeah. how you play baseball. So this this is interesting, too. This guy said, uh, he was talking about it, He said, when a kid makes a drawing for you and brings it to you, right, people go like this. They go, um, oh, it's really good. I love it. Great job. But what he says is way better is to say, wow, how do you feel about that? How does that make you feel? And the reason is, is because you want to make sure that, like, if you say, that's really good, great job, they become externally driven. So they're always looking for someone else's approval as opposed to getting Oh, you them mean to, it makes them successful? Well, but no, because what they'll do is you also want to make them kind of like, kind of go, how do you feel about that? What, what is it doing to you? Is it an honest expression? Is this a and gay it, dad you talk no, to? No, it's interesting. because My it son brings me a drawing. I go, how does that make you feel? Yeah, but but I know I don't do it either. But we're not no, raised no, that way. But nobody but, is. No, but it's interesting because it makes you kind of start to key into how you feel about things. And it, and it keeps you... It Instead keeps of your, looking for outside approval. I guess so. I guess the idea... I guess is, there's some to that. That's also a little bit of woke bullshit. No, but... But, uh, but, but there's some... Like psychologically, my, I don't know if it I is. I guess. I guess. You know, because that's all we ever do. But, but he's also looking for the approval of his dad. So if you never go, man... That's that's really good right he doesn't know right how's that make you feel I was like I, I drew it what do you what do you think is yeah. it good i'm fucking eight yeah so i think there's a fine line there they I need know. to calm I, down I, I with know. that like my son came home with a it painting little, it's, it's a little, it's a little i've never shit. done it but my son came home with a martin luther king drawing they did and he can draw you know i can draw my, my dad can draw my grandpa can draw like he's creative so he came home with a martin luther king picture for uh uh black history month hmm. and the nose is so big the, the nose is like this, and he brings it to me, and he goes, Dad, what do you think? I go, oh, my God, dude. I said, <laughs> I said this is for Black History Month? He goes, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. That nose, though, right? That nose, you got to be, <laughs> be careful. My wife's like, stop. I'm like, I'm, but the nose is so big. <laughs> You're just being honest. Life's going to say And he goes, Dad, that's how his nose is Life's like. going to say I go, I, I go, I know. I said, it's good thing you don't have social media, bud. You can't uh, post this. That's funny you say the, the drawing for your kids, because I remember, like, when I was like down and out and I was like on crack, you know, and I'm um, depressed and doing a lot of drugs, I would draw, mm. right? I would draw. And then one day, like, I forgot I, I forgot I drew something. So my wife, I brought her, she came over to my house and like, she, she was cleaning, helped me clean, and I was not there. And she pulled the refrigerator out and there was a bunch of paintings on the back of the refrigerator. That you had done? Yeah. And then my wife said, what'd you do that for? And then, oh yeah, I think I was drunk and <laughs> my dad never put my shit on the refrigerator. <laughs> so I decided to put it in the back of the refrigerator. 
That's some deep Psychologically, shit. that's fucking deep. That was That's how fucked up I was. Damn, bro. I, I, had, drew, I had painted a, wow. a Van Gogh's bedroom in the back of the refrigerator with oil paints. Damn. Whoa. You were high as shit. <laughs> you were high as shit. Psychologically, <laughs> psychologically you're like, yeah, that's cause, so Yeah, because I remember. Um, what was, so did, was your, your parents together? My, 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 I would give my dad, I remember, because my dad never like acknowledged the paintings, whether he said, um, how does it make you feel? Yeah. He just like, he just like, I guess like, he would just look, he didn't even, he just, oh, he was a, huh. He wouldn't pay attention. He's your huh. What'd your dad do? He was a welder, a welder. He, so he you welded. Did, did, did you have he, a good relationship with him? He worked all day. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to brag, but I had my mom and dad there. Yeah. yeah. Slight <laughs> flex. Yeah, man. That's yeah, but thing. that was funny, man. My yeah. wife saw the, the, the painting in the back, the back of the refrigerator. You just want them on the fridge. Bro, that's a I just ass. wanted to be in the front of the fridge with a magnet. It's so psych I, psychological. I put all my son's paintings on the fridge. Yeah. All of them. I do, I do think that you can kind of like be too positive with your kids sometimes. Like it's like, ah, oh, that's amazing. Everything you do is amazing. No, like, not everything's amazing. But if they put time into know. it, but if they put time in and it's a, a good painting, we'll put it on there. Yeah. 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 What do you got, Chin? Chin, did you draw as a kid? You're ar artistic. <laughs> artistic, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Draw, make music, all that stuff. Even when you are a kid, you make music? Is your dad still alive? I would die like See, last year. Play, right, I'll play instruments. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, just ruin. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it's all ruined. Hey. That was funny you hey, said it. My Fuck dad grew up. <laughs> my I'd rather do this. I, my I, dad I, I, died last year. I'm sorry, buddy. And I remember I was making this joke video, and, I, and then I, uh, somehow there was a picture of my dad's um, photo. From the funeral. Oh, yeah. And this, this is this guy right here that went his whole life without giving hugs and saying good job. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? It's dark. That's part of what made you a comic. Yeah. I swear to God. Because, like, that's where you're looking, right? For that validation somewhere else. Yeah, the laughs, getting validation. Or a tag from him or something. Yeah, give me a tag. Yeah, bro. Punch up the something. jokes, pops. I, I always say that I'm a comic because I was moved around constantly. And my dad was always traveling. My dad was just, he was always gone. It's not, I'm not saying it was an absent father, but he was just, he was working all the time. He was a salesman? Hmm? Salesman? He was a banker. Oh. So he was just always somewhere else, and he worked for the government. He worked for the CIA. I mean, yeah, that's whatever he did. He did up, you know. Yeah. But he was always gone. Brian's so, 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 and then I, we would be moved every, every time to a different, so you have to kind of like, if you want attention, <laughs> you got to get funny. But it wasn't like, that, especially when. It was a mob? Well, CIA, so no. yeah, mob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My dad was in the mob. We were rich once, twice. <laughs> once, before everybody went to but jail. But back in the, especially when you were born, your dad too and mine, like they, it was just times were different. Like dads worked. Yeah. yeah. That's the way they provide. Everyone's like, man, your dad. And like now we look at it like, oh, that's, you know, as the woke people say, that's that's child abuse. Your dad's never. I know, right? Like, no, man. He was fucking bro, leading by like example. Was, that, yeah. said, he and set that's the, the only way example. I tried, just, just trying to make it in this world and make enough money. I don't know about you guys. It's, it takes all of me. It's fucking hard. Like, it's just now, really now's hard. A, now's a little different where dad's like, like my dad, you know, when I was playing, growing up playing football, whatever it was, baseball, football, really he couldn't come to the practices and watch no, no. I, i'd get myself there i'd walk there with my, all my shit you ever see some calculus joke about that yeah but hold on so i would i would always walk to practice now like i haven't missed this, my son's practice in i don't know two years like i go to every single practice That's awesome my dad can't no but he also worked a nine to five right so but it's just especially out here in the valley like things are different now where these dads are at every single thing which i don't think is good mm. yeah I, I, it, why it, too much it, pressure yeah, you gotta let the kid learn. You gotta let him like fly. Like he has to learn on his own. If it's for him, I'll figure it him out. Get booed. <laughs> yeah, get so a little harassed. Or like even bullied were, a little. Like when you were a little kid playing baseball, right? Um, there, there was, did you remember that kid who did, was left-handed? Didn't have a glove. Yeah, yeah. To go to the next kid and borrow it. Mm. Yeah. And they just threw it at his ass. Right? They never handed it to him. Yeah, they always throw it to him here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Yeah, they, that? Dude, that's so funny. Yeah, they never just go, here you go, man. Yeah. Like, Can you borrow a glove? Like, fuck. <laughs> it's just like this fucking. And there was a kid, there was always like, the, my growing up playing baseball, I, I was okay, but I didn't suck. Right. And I remember the kid who was sucked, he had all new shit, bro. And, and there was always that kid that was badass who didn't have cleats. Yeah, man. So he had to take oh, his cleats and give it to him. And then the other kid forgot his hat. So this guy had to give his hat 
to that kid. <laughs> oh, this guy fuck has no t-shirt now. He forgot his t-shirt. <laughs> he has no dad. So this guy's in a fucking in the, I remember having seen this kid in a dugout with no cleats, no jersey, and no hat, just his fucking um his pants <laughs> rooting, bro. It to him. Yeah. Rooting. Yeah, because yeah, they give it to the good kid. Rooting, bro. And now but now you can't have a kid like that, you know. Now that kid has to fucking play now. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, the, yeah it's they not don't keep good. score, right? No, we keep score. You do. Yeah, I made sure we keep score. <clears throat> yeah, we keep score and then also um it's just different too where like travel ball used to be something special. Travel if you were on a travel ball you team. You were badass. Badass. You travel were a, team, a, a man. Tra like, but now what happens is their parents, these rich parents, their kid doesn't get selected for a travel ball. So now there's no beer for entry. So the the rich parents just say, okay, we're gonna create our own. So now travel ball is not special anymore. You have every slap dick and Harry on a travel oh, ball wow. team. That's okay. why there's so many travel ball teams and there's so much money into travel ball. Uh -huh. So now when a kid goes, I play travel ball, back in the day, be like, damn, he must be pretty good. Now I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, it, it doesn't mean much anymore. Mm -hmm. Now there's some teams, like the team my son's on, these other teams where you gotta you gotta try out. It's it's an elite group, but they're playing other teams where the rich parents just put the team together and they get their ass whooped. Like those kids should not, like there's kid, you know, I coach and you do what you can, but some of those kids shouldn't be out there, man. And the dad, what for whatever reason, wanted to play for the Dodgers, didn't work out, so he's forcing his son. It's like he, and you're, the, the kid's like in right field, like staring the wrong way. Eating bugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd rather be drawing or some shit. <laughs> he's you know? right-handed with a left-handed glove. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if <laughs> you see it, it's on. heartbreaking. You're like, God, just get him out of here, man. Because it's embarrassing for the kid. He realizes he's not like the other kids. Like, yeah. dude, you're setting him up for failure. Yeah. I don't think you could say easy out no more. No, yeah, oh, dude, that's all I used to get. I wasn't. I dude, wasn't we, we had this ref who didn't get this <clears throat> Mexican ref, big dude. He was an ump, and I I loved this dude because you know the kids when they you go in the MLB they're like strike and you know, but yeah. now at, at at the pee wee level you know the 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 little league level they'll do it strike so they don't want to embarrass the kid. Uh. Travel ball playing against all Mexicans. This Mexican ref goes, the kid like kind of, and he goes, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Strike. I'm like, oh, I like this <laughs> damn, guy. Damn. Yes, you did. Damn. Yeah, he got into it. Baseball for me was, uh, I always wanted to be a good baseball player. Couldn't hit. I could I could field. But I remember playing against this kid, Mike Gomez, who I think ended up playing a uh, little, played like triple A ball or whatever. But even when he was younger, probably, I was probably, I don't know, eight, nine, ten. I don't know what it was. I couldn't believe how fast you he was pitching. You can tell the difference. I could not believe how fast he was pitching. Oh, uh, but he's better at like, you know, we talk about, like, Tiger's good, especially for how long he's been playing. Tiger's damn good. He's yeah. athletic. This team, on Sunday, they're in the championship travel ball team. They're, I'm, I'm the only white person on campus. If there's <laughs> seven fields, all travel ball, all, all Latinas, it's all they play. Oh, but Tiger had a rude awakening. This kid was Is throwing, right? this, kid's, this kid was nine, throwing consistently. Uh, 60 miles an hour. Damn. Change ups, curveballs. Not, n sir. No one got a hit off the kid. Well, because your son's no, seven, on. though. That's not fair. He's eight, but still, he's playing with the nine year olds. No one got a hit off the kid. The kid pitched back to back games, which is illegal, but tell those Mexicans that they don't give a fuck. <laughs> he threw 150 <laughs> pitches in one game. That's going to be Tommy John surgery. He's that's crazy. Nine. I wouldn't let him do that. Would you? Oh, one of the coaches complained, and the Mexican coach was like, okay, didn't give a fuck. Yeah. He was like, okay. And the dads are like, what's the issue? I'm like, Tough as oh, shit. wow. I thought, and I thought it was um, illegal to throw curves and change-ups. It is because it fucks with their, their joints. Because I know like, they made it in the, late, the later on, and when you're 14, you can, but not when you're 8. Yeah. Oh, not but, the league we were playing. Right. Look at the, <laughs> the, the way these kids come up with boxing. These Latinas, mocks, dude, these Latin, dude. Oh, and then he was throwing, and then someone fouled one off. And the coach fucked up, goes, you got his timing now. The kid goes, I look at the coach, he's going like this. Oh no! Big Mexican dude, he's doing all these hand signs. I'm like, what the fuck? Kid starts throwing changeups. What the fuck? Right down the pipe. The guy's timing there. Say less. No one's getting the kid's timing. Damn. We played a travel Tiger team. Tiger didn't get sniff a hit. Fuck. We played the Montebello Dodgers, and they were a travel team. And that pitcher, man, and we were just a, a a team from the projects. We thought we were badass. That kid struck out everybody twice. Everybody. Dude, there's some little gangsters. We're going to beat their ass at the end of the game. <laughs> That's how bad it was. Damn. 
I mean, they, he still got everyone. I love sports for that, though. It's just, it's just clear. It's just like, you know. Oh, I love it. I like Tiger got that life lesson. So did the rest of those kids that thought they were Huge. the shit. Because they're playing straight blue-collared Mexican kids where it's like the one dad I was talking to because travel ball is expensive. The one dad I'm talking to, the wife works, the dad works, the son's a super baller. And the dad's like, this is all we, like, is all we I have. work nine to five yeah. and I get off work and we rush him. He, he has practice or games every yeah. single day. Yeah. He's like, we don't go on vacations. Like, That's our right. vacations are travel ball for my son. And I'm like, God, the pressure. And you look at the kid, happy as fuck. So if you if you see, like, the tennis circuit. I don't know if that's the way to do it, right. but for them it works. The tennis circuit's that way. So I know somebody played in the American circuit. And I said, you know, he was, like, number 1,000 in the in the world. It's amazing, you know. Michael Costa was like that. Michael Costa, the comic, 1,000 in the world. Great comic. You talk to Michael, and, and, and Michael would be like, He's like, well, then you're competing with the Russians and the Serbs and the people that, that live in a van. I saw these satellite pros. I was in the south of France. I saw these the satellite pros. The guys are trying to make it into, the men and women are trying to make it in the beer. They live in a van with their Russian father. Down by a river. Literally in a van. I'm not talking about a nice van. I'm talking about a VW van. Hell yeah. And they travel all through Europe together. Trying and they to make eat, it. And they're trying to make it. And they train like that. Mm, the A team. It is fuck. They sleep in that van together. It's the most. But that's when you realize, like, the think that's what you're competing with. Like, I try right. to tell my son this, right. and I think you realize it because that travel ball team on Sunday, which you know is Encino, we get there. There's I don't know, it's probably 500 baseball players, and that's just oh one weekend. God. And those are just and those are just a fraction of the what? teams. Think how many te how many people are how many kids are playing baseball? That's why baseball is the toughest sport to make pro. So many people fucking play. So it's like you think you're special, and then you meet this Mexican kid from fucking you know, Hacienda Heights, where that's all he does. It's just they're, they're just different, yeah, bro. Yeah. They're just different animals. It's all he has. He ain't playing with toys and Game Boys and Playstations. He's fucking playing baseball. Yeah. That's what you're competing with. It's so nuts. That's why they didn't make it, man. Because my dad never threw grounders at me. <laughs> I needed a white dad, man, to get me up at six. Yeah. Come on, Tommy. You gotta get this bar. You gotta be better than blacks. You gotta be better than Mexicans. You gotta be on top of your game. You know, it's breathing baseball. It's all about the to, ground balls. Going something. to sleep with a baseball bat. Yeah, yeah man. Isn't it funny, Felipe? That like, that, thank God for all that because you're a great comic and you're also really unique. Like your your rhythm. You're one of the most unique. You Super start. unique. You're yeah. so unique. Like you're an original. And, and your uh, and your work ethic. Like whatever you know. Obviously, I follow you. On, I see you on Instagram. It's like you're always on the road, dog. Like an old school comic. You're just yeah. always on the road, I see. Yeah, man. I'm going to places I've never been to. Yeah, because that's who you are. You, know, you, don't, I did you don't have kids, right? I have, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm an empty nester, bro. I, I didn't grow up with him. Oh, you, but you <laughs> did. Now, I'm a grandfather now, too. I have two grandkids. Oh, so you did have kids? Yes. Early. Early. I had my first son in high school. Oh, shit. Wow. His mother told me she was pregnant in one of those little papers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that thing. Yeah. Are you one, pregnant? Two, three, yes, four. no, one, two, three, four. <laughs> no. Oh shit. I was young, man. I remember she told me she was pregnant and I told her and her like I didn't know what to say. I just said, Man, that's fucked up. Oh. Goes that I'm pregnant, no, that you're gonna raise a baby by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> And but it worked out all right because when I won last comic standing, she she went after she went she filed for child support that of day. Of course, and she became the last Bay Mama standing. <laughs> and White tennis shoes for everyone. White tennis. You have a relationship and uh, just uh, how many kids? I have three kids and I have four kids because my I raised my my wife's son too. I met him when he was three, so yeah, that counts. And he's twenty one now. Twenty. Damn. Damn. So wait, so you then what about your other, your two biological kids? I have um, two biological kids. Uh, I didn't grow up with them. Mm -hmm. The mom boned out with someone else, and um, and I, then I had another son when I started doing stand up. And do you get do you are you in his life? Yes, he's the producer of the What's Up Full podcast, so he works on oh, the shit. What's Up Full podcast. And he sells merch. Damn. Trying to pay back that child support. <laughs> Question is, do you put his drawings on the front of the fridge? Did you learn from your dad? Hell no! I didn't learn nothing, bro. <laughs> do you get Do you get along with your Do you Do you have Are you in contact with your first son? Yes, he works for um, for um, FedEx. He that's, just, he, he drives so around. Cool. I love FedEx. That's so cool. And then my daughter, she lived in Sweden. Really? She married a guy over there. Wow! Damn, that's your first child? No, it's my second child. Wow! Free um, free medical. She says. Yeah. 
Damn. Yeah. That's why. All right, Ching, give us some current events, what a dog. Life. Sure. What a life. Let's take a little break here. This one's important. All the Fire Kid listeners, boy, I have an exclusive offer for you guys. Fieldcraft Survival is designed to get you ready for all things in life. When things go south and you're unprepared, there's nothing worse. You need to prepare for disasters. Whatever's happened, you can't predict what's going to happen, but you got to be ready to go. That's where Fieldcraft Survival got you covered. The Fieldcraft Survival app, they got you guys covered. They have jiu-jitsu, combative, self-defense, digital training, plus preparedness content to help you learn how to survive the worst case scenario. Whatever you need, they got you guys freaking covered their mission is to prepare every regular human be prepared to survive the worst case scenario in order to do this they offer live training gear online education and their app is second to none all right right now the fieldcraft survival app you can learn all these things to get ready for when the worst case scenario happens and they get it from the experts at fieldcraft the experts help you step by step get prepared for the worst case scenario all right, so for a monthly subscription, you get 30 days free using the code FIGHTER30 free on the survival app, Fieldcraft Survival app. Again, for a monthly subscription, you get 30 days free using the code FIGHTER30 free. For annual subscription, you get 35% off your annual subscription using code FIGHTER35. They'd also like to offer you a discount on their products and training. Use code FIGHTER20 for 20% off training and products on fieldcraftsurvival.com. That's fieldcraftsurvival.com. All right, so I saw this clip as well. This is Shia LaBeouf. My oh, I, and I love Shia, former uh, co-worker. Um, <laughs> I don't get um, why he's going at Ryan Garcia. He'll explain here. Let me play it. Are you a big boxing fan? Yeah. You are? Yeah. Who's your favorite fighter? Right now, probably Gervontis Davis because I'm... Gervontis Davis? Yeah, probably. You know what? Gervonta. He's a bad boy, isn't he? Yeah, it's probably that. It's, it, he's electrifying. He's from Baltimore. I know he's not. Yeah, him, Shakur, like that whole weight Shakur class, Steve. that whole division, that whole division. He had quite tight fight in his last night. Other than Ryan, all of those guys that they promote are fire. Yeah. yeah. What's wrong with Ryan? Javante Davis had some tough upbringing. He's from Baltimore. Yeah. I don't name. like that Ryan guy. He keeps going at him. him. I hate him. Yeah. Do you hate him? I don't hate, hate him? him. I don't hate nobody. Did but he quit against him. Davis? With he, the one, he quit, but also I heard a story about his girl got pregnant. Gave birth and then he divorced her. That's fake. That's not real. God damn it. Shia LaBeouf, you think you'd know social media. But he's talking about Gerald Vontis, right? Dog, wait a minute. She just got Pause it. So he, so he fell victim of social media, which has happened to everybody. So Ryan Garcia's uh, baby mama, or yeah, his wife had a baby. And it comes out they divorced her that same day. And Ryan's very clear about this. He's like, no, no, no. We, we were separated. She had the baby. The divorce, they just announced it. We've right. been dealing with this forever. Social media takes it, acts like I filed for a divorce the day the baby was born. He's like, that's not real. Right. So, of course, Shia hears that. He's like, that guy's a piece of shit. Shia, more than anybody, Should after know. the shit he, storm he's been through, you know social media. Yeah. You're going to judge a fighter, Ryan Garcia, off social media? Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah. Shia, also, Shia's smarter than that. He's better than that. Shia also fell for the Willy Wonka world, too. <laughs> <laughs> And one hundred percent, he did. I don't know that Shia knows boxing that much. Like I, I no, he called him Gervontis yeah, Davis. Gervontis like, uh, sounds like me. Yeah, I'm like I don't know if he saw too much. I mean, it is an electrifying division, but I'm like watching it going. Mm. I mean, little, Shakur Stevens, uh, yeah. Javante Davis. He he knew the guys. He said but, Shakur. He didn't even know his last name. No, yeah. I mean, you're like, eh. That's like this comic I, I I saw one time a young guy. He said, "Who's your favorite comedian?" Mitch Hindenburg. <laughs> God, talk. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. What else okay. you got, Tin? Yep. So here's a good one. Uh, this 82-year-old homeowner in Dana Point, his house is literally falling off this cliff. Oh, I and he's like, like I'm not leaving. What? I ain't not leaving. leaving. Damn. And I guess they Dana even brought Point's a city nice. manager out there to check the house, and they were like, at the moment, it seems to be okay. Damn, Dana Would Point. you live in this? Um, yeah. <laughs> Look at this. I'll tell you why. I mean, if, if I'm 80 and single... Yeah, whatever. That's a cool story. If I die with my house falling off the cliff, all good. Yeah, Dana if I'm eighty right. with, you know, six kids in the house and twelve grand grandchildren, look at how nice that place is. Though. Mm -hmm. 
like, it was like the house Dana Point sick. I know you wake up and you just see the ocean like that. Fuck. Wow, look at that cliff. Oh man, that house is that other house is not good either though. <laughs> Wait, is no. this house the one on the left or right? The left. The left. I'm f the left. I'm like, yeah, suck my wiener. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, the right. The right. Is looks very precarious. Yeah. The right looks like it's hanging. I mean, dude, dude you're standing. It literally is. It's literally leaning. Look at the over. guest house. What is he need more dirt? I don't know, man, but the left More literally mountain. looks like the house is going like its lip mm -hmm. is protruding. That looks like if you were on the if you're sitting if you're on the the front porch or the back porch, you're you're at a slant. That's not like even. if me and Felipe jumped on that deck, that thing's going over. <laughs> yes, it's that's what over. that looks yes. like. Yes, yeah, that's crazy. Good right morning, there. neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> ah! I'm with the old guy, uh, the eighty year old on the left. Oh, now fuck off. I'm not yeah. leaving my house. The far right. Yeah, hard pass. Yeah, because that, that, you're right. Because the, the one on the left is really kind of like on steady ground. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a hot set. He's gonna be dead by the time the thing falls yes. over. But the other one is irresponsible. Other you one looks like one of my son's that drawings. That's it, fucking that's, crazy. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, it does. It looks yeah. like a like. It's, it's just a little. It's Whoville. lopsided. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't look well done. No, the structure's all fucked. Where's Dana Point? Is that out in um, that's Orange out, County? Yeah. Issue? Yeah. yeah, by me. So nice out there. Fuck, it's nice, yeah. Okay, this was a funny one. So these squatters set up in this Hollywood, like, Hills mansion. Yeah. And the two people that own the house were going to go show it. And they go and they find all these people in the house. And an OnlyFans bottle comes to the door with a fake lease agreement that says, I re I'm renting a room here. So whoever... That's the, what they do. The first squatter yes. is renting out the yes. rooms and making money And out. LA's so wild that they protect the squatter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The cops came and were like, we don't, what do you want us to do? Oh, I've, I've, I've seen this before. You, you can have um, a lease agreement and it's just a piece of paper. The, your, people can stay in your place for as long as they and there's, want. And you can't do much to get them so out. Careful. It's, it's a piece oh, of paper. Dude, but a high-profile house like this? I, no, they can, they, it's squatting and the, and the laws protect them where you can't really do much against them. It's insane. Today, I was at the Dodge dealer today dealing with something. I had to drop one of my car, cars off there. And the guy I've known forever... Um, he goes, uh, he goes, yeah, man, this will be the last time I see you. I go, what the fuck? He goes, I'm getting out of this shithole. I'm like, whoa. He's like, I bought a bunch of property in Nashville. I'm out, fucking out of here. He's like, it's only a matter of time for the LA's on fire. I'm like, okay. LA's got big problems. This I was like, is Jesus Christ, man. I was like, yeah. see you later. Squatter it's rights. 730, bud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's true. Yeah, he's hey, like, he's like this LAX? place is the purge. LAX on a Sunday night? Go go pick somebody up there and see how, tell me how that goes How for busy you. it is? It's, it's. It's just the infrastructure. It can't handle all well, the cars. Well, they're but they're doing a. They're they've been. It's been under construction for five years. It's supposed to be done soon. Yeah, I never see them working. I never see. No, them I've never seen them actually work. They're never. It's just always under construction. It's it's like New York in the seventies. It's dude, like when the it's big dig in um, Boston. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's exactly right, it's dude. Like, when you fly American and you're like Gate E seventy six, I only see oh, D, dude. and they go, "Oh, you gotta take the shuttle." You're oh like, no! Well, kill me. I want to. Well, die. fucking kill and me. I'm always. I have to take a shuttle. Yeah. LA's got so many. See when LA that project's going to be done? Never. <laughs> They're so full of shit. It is the worst run city, man. I got to fly out of LA. They're making tomorrow. a catwalk right now. Yeah. If you could walk we from know. Southwest to United. Oh, yeah. That'd be nice. Oh, that's it. Well, you, well, you know Instead I of playing right Frogger? Across. I caught yeah. right across. Multiple it or not? Could. I put LAX. 2020. No, 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 no. That's uh, improvements to the target completion date prior to the 2028 Olympics. That's bullshit. So we're looking at four years. God damn, they've been doing it for 10? That's a nightmare. It's just such bullshit. And they're not working. We'll go through 2030, it says. Oh my we'll God. look forward to that. What? Hmm. What else you got, Jen? Yeah. Okay. So this is wild. This groom, I guess, so the groom has a lot of money. A wealthy family his wife that he married came from a poor family the mom was so against this she kept started faking heart attacks and faking ailments to try to get her son to leave the fiance and it still didn't work nope and then on the day of the wedding paid some random three people to throw red paint all over the bride's wedding dress she's pretty gangster i mean let me see i don't this. even know what to say about this i hate this because a wedding is like when you're really excited and then look at that Oh, wow. She had to go home and change. Damn, what a terrible mom. What a terrible mom and what a terrible wedding. Ah, uh, what a bummer. That is some white shit, though. I knew they were white. Yeah. I knew they were the white. The groom was born to what? Wealthy people? Go back? Yeah, I think Sanaz said that, right? Yeah. I knew they were white. Basically, the groom has money. And she doesn't? Yeah. The mom didn't like it. Yeah. Well, is that it, Jen? I think so. Damn. Felipe, brother. 
Thanks for coming What's on, up, dog. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, no, we, and they, and they we didn't can even let you finish up. I'm sorry. We we're we're finish what up? Finish what up? Just watching all the... <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were quiet toward the end, but... I mean, I'll I'll even, what are you going to do with that? It's sold, sold. Yeah. In Albany. Albany, New York. St- tickets at the Funny Bone. And that's March 16th. Then, Albany's um, not a bad... Actually, well... No, I was thinking about Buffalo. Albany's, Albany's the capital. Albany's tough. Then um, I'm in Helium Comedy Club in St. Louis, Richmond Heights. Mm-hmm. That's where the mall is. Yep. Damn, you're all over, brother. Wow. Then San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara's Monterey. Damn, that's nice. Yeah. Seattle, West Neptune. Coast, Neptune Theater. Salem been for there. the first time. <laughs> Seattle, Morgan. Greensboro, North Carolina. Comedy Zone. Boy, you're on the road, yeah, man. Greensboro's, yeah. Greensboro's it's pretty And cool. what's the site? Where can you get tickets, Chin? At FelipeWorld.com tour. FelipeWorld.com. All right, brother. We appreciate it, man. We got hey, live Fire the Kid in Austin, March 29th. March 29th, Fire the Kid's back in Austin. Come see me and Brian live podcast. That's March 29th. One show only, 7.30. It's on a Friday now. Bricktown Comedy Club, Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm there March 15th and 16th. Felipe, we love you, man. They appreciate it, brother. Me, that was great, appreciate bro. It.